Buzz, buzz, buzz. It's Polly the honeybee again. Last time, I told you that I visited flowers to collect nectar and pollen for food. I also told you that I helped to pollinate flowers by carrying pollen from one flower to another. Today, I want to show you some of the results of my hard work. You see, after I pollinate a flower, the plant begins to produce seeds. Lots of plants also produce a special part to hold the seeds called the fruit. Come along and I will show you some different kinds of fruit that I help create. Here is an apple tree. Earlier this year, this tree put out blossoms, which is another word for flowers. Apple blossoms are full of delicious nectar, which makes me especially love to buzz over and roll around in those blossoms. The nectar was scrumptious. But look, it was good for the tree too. Remember that when bees visit the flowers of plants, they carry the pollen from one flower to another. This apple tree is now full of apples because my honeybee friends and I did such a good job pollinating the blossoms. The apples are fruit, and inside each apple are seeds that can grow into new apple trees. The apples took weeks to grow. They were small at first, but then they got bigger and bigger. Now they are almost ripe. When the apples are ripe, they will drop off the tree so seeds can fall to the ground and start growing into a new apple tree, or a person may come and pick the apple and eat it. Here is an image of an apple that has been picked off the tree and sliced open. You can see the seeds. The seeds are the dark brown things in the center part called the core. Some people like to cut the seeds out of the apple before they eat it. Some people also cut off the peel on the outside of the apple. Here's another tree I pollinated. It's called a cherry tree. Some time ago, this tree produced lovely pink blossoms or flowers. Let me tell you, there's almost nothing more beautiful than a cherry tree in full bloom. My bee buddies and I spent a lot of time visiting this tree when the blossoms were out, and look what happened since then. The flowers are all gone now, but that's okay because they did what they were supposed to do. Now the tree has begun to make seeds and fruit. Have you ever bitten into a fresh cherry? If you have, your teeth have probably bumped into a cherry seed. Inside a cherry is a big hard thing called the cherry pit. The seed of the cherry is actually inside the cherry pit. The tasty part of the cherry that people eat is the soft fruit around the pit. To people, that seems like the most important part of a cherry, but to the plant, the most important part is the seed that can grow into a new plant. Now here's a different kind of plant. This is a strawberry plant. It put out flowers a while ago, and my honey-making pals and I visited those flowers as well. Now you can see that the plant is making seeds and fruit. We must have pollinated it. The fruits on this plant are called strawberries. You saw how the seeds of the apple and the cherry tree grow inside the fruit. With a strawberry, it's the other way around. Look at this ripe strawberry. You can see the seeds all over the outside of the strawberry. The seeds on this strawberry are so small that people can eat them along with the fruit. Here's one last plant. It's a watermelon plant. This watermelon plant bloomed a few weeks ago. I visited its flowers and found the nectar to be quite delicious. I brought some back to my hive where the worker bees made it into honey, but look! The watermelon plant has been busy making something too. This big green thing is the fruit of the watermelon plant. It's called a watermelon. The green part on the outside of the watermelon is called the rind. The seeds of the watermelon are on the inside of the rind along with some red juicy fruit that people like to eat. Here's a watermelon that's been sliced open. Can you see the black and white seeds inside? People spit out the seeds when they are eating the red squishy part of the watermelon. Well, that about concludes my little tour. I'm very proud of the pollinating work I did this year and hope you will think of me as you are munching on the fruits of my labor. I don't know about you, but watermelon sounds amazing right now. I can't stop thinking about fruit. Speaking of fruit, what is fruit and why is it so important to the plant? Do you remember? The fruit is the part that holds the seed. The seed needs that fruit in order to grow into a plant. Do you remember some of the fruits that Polly mentioned in her story? There was the watermelon, um, strawberry, apples, and cherries. I'm sure you can think of a lot more fruits that weren't mentioned in the story, like bananas, lemons, grapes, blackberries, pears. Those are the fruits that you are familiar with. Those are the ones that are available to you in your area. But we live on an entire planet, and so there are fruits that you probably have never seen. So stick around, and I'm going to show you some interesting fruits from different parts of the world. Take care. See you next time. I'm sure you've heard of regular yellow bananas, but have you ever heard of a red banana before? They are from another part of the world. We don't see them too often where we live because it's pretty hard to bring them over here. This fruit is called Buddha's Hand. It reminds a lot of people of fingers. It's apparently very yummy and sweet, even though it doesn't look like it. It has a great smell, and when you open it in your house, it fills up your whole house with a yummy citrus smell. Would you try this one? Next up is a snake fruit. It has the name snake fruit because its outer cover reminds people of a scaly, slithery snake. It is sweet and sour at the same time. 
this next fruit is called durian. It tastes pretty okay, but it apparently smells so bad, like rotten onions, stinky, dirty feet, dirty garbage. Apparently, it's against the law to take it on trains in some places because it smells so bad. This fruit is called mangosteen. Mangosteen has a pretty cool design on the inside, but it is full of nutrients. And the last one I wanted to show you is something called a sugar apple. It's actually very sweet and pretty creamy once you open it. You can even scoop it out with a spoon. But what I found interesting is that you have to avoid eating the seeds. They are toxic. It can make you very, very sick. I don't know if I would want to risk it. What if I accidentally eat a seed? Well, anyway, I hope you enjoyed these fruits. And I wonder, would you try any of them?